Traditional turn-based RPG combat is gone. The art and character designs also make a huge shift from the previous two games. Instead of trying to stuff Mario back into a traditional RPG game, Super Paper Mario shakes up everything that came before it, and it turned out pretty dang good. Welcome to completion number 91 of the Potato Backlog Project. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the incredibly prestigious, though slightly diabolical, Tater Raider. And let's talk about Super Paper Mario. Released in 2007 for the Nintendo Wii, Super Paper Mario is the third release in the storied Paper Mario series of games. The game was originally set to release on GameCube in late 2006, which would have made it one of the last first party games on the system. Instead, the release date ended up being pushed and released on the Nintendo Wii, bypassing the GameCube completely. Due to the console switch being made so late in the game's development cycle, motion control gimmicks were thankfully kept to a minimum. Super Paper Mario reviewed pretty well with critics upon release. But a lot of players and fans didn't like all the departures the game took from the first two games in the series. It seems this sentiment has slightly changed over the years. I do see more positive conversations surrounding the game than I did back in the day, which is kind of funny to me because the game itself hasn't changed at all. I guess the people that are playing it are the ones that changed? Gone are the turn-based battle mechanics and paper storybook presentation style, replaced by a heavily story-driven action-adventure style game. There are still RPG elements present, so it's hard to put the game into a traditional category when talking about the type of game it is. You level up through experience points gained, though this is a simplified mechanic. Choice of what actually levels up is kind of taken from you. Here you'll gain more attack or defense power, as well as see your overall HP go up. What levels up seems to alternate each level that you gain. Another RPG element that stays are usable items. You can get them from chests, an item shop, hidden areas, and from downed enemies. Some are for healing, some for attacking and status effects, but beyond the healing items, I didn't really find myself using the other ones all that often, as some of the offensive items required little Wiimote minigames, which ended up being more annoying than fun for me. Super Paper Mario has a party system of sorts. You have interchangeable playable party members in Peach, Luigi, and Bowser. Each character has a unique ability that will come in handy at some point in your adventure. Luigi gets the classic Super Super high jump. Peach can float, but also has the ability to block attacks with her umbrella, which is actually really powerful in this game. Bowser has the ability to breathe fire, which is awesome, and it also does a ton of damage to most enemies in the game. You will also find and recruit companion style friends in the game called Pixels. Each pixel you can find and unlock offers a unique ability usable by any of your four main party characters. Examples include a hammer, as a way to grab and throw things, as a cool pixel that allows you to shrink down into mini Mario, and then even simple stuff like a ground pound pixel. One of my favorites was the pixel that allows you to actually turn and make yourself paper thin in whichever space you're in. Most of the pixels are essential in unlocking all the secrets to be found in each world. Maybe not the most visually appealing friend or companion abilities, but functionally they were all interesting and fun to use while exploring and figuring out the mysteries of the game. For me, the coolest game mechanic addition and change from the first two games is the ability to change between 2D and 3D playing fields on the fly. Oh, this is kind of weird at first. This mechanic worked really well in keeping the world exploration of the game interesting and engaging. Figuring out different ways to take advantage of this mechanic ended up making the game a ton of fun. I enjoyed the story of Super Paper Mario very much. There are well-defined characters, very strong themes, and an overall arc that is followed through to a very satisfying conclusion at the end. The writing is kind of funny and a little bit down the silly road at times, but it made for some good laughs and there are some genuine touching moments throughout. I remember saying in another Mario video I made that I don't play Mario games for the story, since they're all essentially the same. Super Paper Mario is the exception to that comment. If you ever wanted a Mario game with a compelling narrative, look no further, this is the one. Personally, I enjoyed the simple art styles the game had to offer, mostly driven by simple shapes and what appears to be the game taking place on a PC. The previous two Paper Mario games seemed like a pop-up book and a play with paper cutouts for the visual representation. I really dug this old school computer game look and feel right from the start. Lots of the references and design choices are pretty subtle and some of them aren't very subtle at all. I think this look was pretty misunderstood and the stark contrast visually from the first two games to Super Paper Mario is what initially turned a lot of players off back in the day. There is a little bit of filler and some unnecessary backtracking on certain levels. It wasn't horrible overall and I still enjoyed the exploring focus the game was designed around. But for a game with story and gameplay as strong as Super Paper Mario, filling out playtime just to fill out playtime wasn't really needed here. Some of the backtracking could have been tightened up a little bit in my opinion. 
four happy potato faces out of five. This was a super close five to me. If it is shaved off about two hours of the backtracking gameplay, this is an incredibly unique video game experience. I don't know that I've played a game quite like it. It takes a bunch of different ideas from a few different game genres. It just mashes them together in a way that really worked for me. Let me know your favorite Paper Mario game in the comments. Have you played Super Paper Mario recently? What do you think? With that, the Backlog Project rolls on. Thank you so much for watching. Be kind to yourselves and others that deserve it. We're on to the next one. So let's go. It's been so long since I made a video. I don't know how to make videos anymore. Oh my God. Oh, please tell me I hit record. Please tell me I hit record. Oh my God. The art and character designs also take a blah, 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 blah. Ooh, it's gonna be hard getting back into it. What levels up each time you level up seems to alternate between levels. Oh my God, that's horribly written. The story of Super Paper Mario was very enjoying. <laughs> Why does that make sense? 